So today, what I think I'm going to do instead of a meditation is I'm going to tell you guys a story about dharma. So meditation can be a lot of different things, but one of them is reflection. And so this is kind of like a substitute for meditation. So I'm going to tell you a story about a guy named Bhishma. And um, what I want you guys to do is just think, because people are asking about dharma. So this is, a, uh, this is a story about dharma. And the goal here is people are asking, like, how do I find my dharma? So let me tell you a story about Bhishma, and then let's see, like, what you guys can understand about dharma. So the first thing is that um, dharma means duty or responsibility. And it's my belief that one of the best ways to move forward in life is to, like, live your dharma and find out what your dharma is, because that gives you strength. So uh, there was a guy named Shantanu. I think it was Shantanu. Um, and he got married, and he had a kid named Pishma. And then he ended up divorcing his wife for reasons that will be another story for another day. Um, and so it's like father and son. So father's king, and then his son Pishma is going to be crown prince. And so Bhishma is like a really fantastic son. He's very wise. He's very talented. He's a good warrior. He has good judgment. He has good morals. So he's like a wonderful, he's going to be a wonderful crown prince. And so his dad is very content because his son is like growing up to be the man that he wants him to be. So everything's fine and dandy. One day Shantanu is out hunting. And um, he actually takes like a barge. So he takes his chariot on a barge. And the barge gets like, like he takes the barge across the river and the barge, like the barge person, the person who pushes the barge is a young woman who is very, very attractive and he falls in love with her. And so he sees this hottie and he's like, man, she is amazing. And he hasn't like, Bhishma is like 25 at this point. So he's all grown up. And, um, and so then he's like, but she's also like Bhishma's age. So he's like, oh, that's like silly. I can't get into that. But he's like, he's smitten, right? And so then he goes back and he's like, he finishes his hunt and then goes back. And then over the next couple of days, like Pishma is an observant and dutiful son. So he notices that his dad is, uh, yeah, barge, like a boat. It's like a boat woman. So he notices his dad is distracted, right? And so he says, hey, dad, like, what's up? It seems like you're not all here. And then his dad is like, oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. And then he's like, no, really, dad, like, what's going on? What's going on? So he pushes his dad and he pushes his dad. And then his dad finally says, hey, son, like, I know this is a little bit shameful, but like, I, I like met this woman and I can't get her out of her head. And she's completely like, it's completely inappropriate for me to like, want to marry her. You know, my first responsibility is to you, but like, you know, I know nothing can come of it. So don't worry about it. But that's what's on my mind. And then what do you guys think Pishma says? Yeah, okay. That's what I get for asking Twitch chat. Yeah, so he says what I think most of you are saying, which is um which is he says like, "Hey man, that's fine by me. Like you do you, you know, like follow your heart. Um and if you want to if you want to like go for it, like go for it. Like I have no problem if you want to get married. Like you haven't had a a wife for many years and if it makes you happy, like go and do it with my blessing." So his dad is actually overjoyed. He's like, "Yeah." Right? So dad goes and goes to the, the woman, her woman is like uh, the, the girl's father is like sort of like a head of the boat people. And so he goes to the boat king and he's like, Hey, so I'd love to get your daughter's hand in marriage. And then the boat king is like overjoyed because this is a huge step up. Right. And so he's like, Oh, like, I'd love it if my daughter married you. Like, thank you so much for showing interest in her. Um, I'd love it if you married her. You're welcome to marry her. But I have some conditions. And then the king is like, what conditions? And so the boat king is like, well, look, so I understand that you love my daughter, but I can't bear the thought of my daughter being a second class citizen in anyone's household, even the king's. So like, I, I'm happy that you want to be like, like that you want to be, you know, married to her, but if you marry her, I need you to promise me that her children will inherit the throne and that you need to pass over Bhishma as crown prince. Because a queen whose children are not going to inherit is like no queen at all. So I need my daughter to come first in your household. 
And that's just what I have to, you know, that's just, those are my conditions. So what do you guys think Pishma's dad says? What do you think? Absolutely, right? He's like, fuck you. Fuck this. I'm out of here. So Pishma's dad goes. And then he's like, so Pishma's dad is like super depressed now. He's like solid emo, you know, like wearing his goth makeup and stuff like that. And Pishma notices. And he's like, dad, what's wrong? What's wrong? He's like, you seem more bummed out than even before. And he's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm fine. I'm fine. There's no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. And then this time his dad refuses to tell him. He's like, not going to say shit. So then Pishma goes to his charioteer and he says, hey, man. Like, my dad, we had this conversation. My dad seemed really upbeat because I was like, yeah, man, go follow your heart. And then he woke up the next morning. He went out hunting. And, like, what happened? Because he came back and he's been wearing his goth makeup ever since. And and then the charioteer's like, well, I don't know what, what ex- happened, but I can tell you that, like, you know, I took him to go see the Boat King. And he was really happy before he saw the Boat King. And then when he walked out of the Boat King's hut, he was super upset. And so Pishma's is like, okay, let me go see what's going on. So Pishma goes down to the boat king and he walks in and he says, excuse me, sir, I'm Pishma." And the boat king is like, yeah, I know who you are. And he's like, well, I'd like to, I- I'm curious, can you tell me a little bit about what you and, and my dad talked about? And, Pish- and the boat king says, well, sure, I can, I can tell you and I'm, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm happy to share it. So your dad asked for my daughter's hand in marriage. And I said, I'm happy to, to have her marry you, but I have conditions. And then Bhishma was like, well, what conditions? And he's like, it's nothing against you, bro. I think you're fantastic. But I can't have my daughter be a second-class citizen in anyone's household. So I asked your king, I asked your dad to, that if he marries her, her kids have to be in line for the throne, and she has to be, like, number one in the household. And then your dad turned me down, which is fine. No hard feelings. And then Bhishma says, but wait, wait, wait. Actually, like, I have no problem with that. Like, I understand that my dad was not willing to pass me over, but I have no problem giving up the throne. And so, if I give up the throne, will you let your daughter marry my father? And the guy says, yeah, absolutely. But, I have some additional conditions. And Pishma's like, what do you mean additional conditions? Like, I said I would give up the throne. He's like, yeah, I I get... I get that you would give up the throne, but here's the thing. One day you're going to have kids and my daughter's going to have kids and they're going to be about the same age. And sometimes this is how civil wars start, right? Because your kids, you're willing to give up the throne, but your kids may not be, may not be willing to. They may have a chip on their shoulder because you were supposed to inherit and you gave up the throne and they could actually start a civil war with my grandchildren. So what I need you to do is swear to never get married and never have children. And what do you guys think Bhishma says? He says, so be it. And he vows to never have, he gives up the throne, vows to never have children, and never get married. And so Bhishma in Sanskrit means one who makes a terrible vow. I don't know if terrible is like a pun, if it means like a shitty vow, or like a like a big vow. And so now, this is a story about dharma. Okay? So now I'm going to ask you guys, so you guys think that the, the boat king is an evil guy, right? So let's think about dharma. So the, the big problem is we think about good and evil. In Western society, we think about an absolute morality of good and evil. In Eastern stuff, they think about dharma. So let's think about who is doing their dharma. So who are the different people in in this story? There's Shantanu, there's Bhishma, and there's the boat king. Arguably the daughter, but right? So let's start with Shant like let's start with Bhishma's dad. Is Bhishma's dad doing his dharma? What do you guys think? What is his dharma? What is the what is Shantanu's dharma? The king. So do you guys think, do you think the king is doing his dharma? Yes or no? Okay. 
Okay, so now I want you guys to look at Twitch chat, right? So this is why Dharma is confusing. Because for such a simple question, there's a lot of, like, confusion about what the answer is. So this is why stories are important. So I want you guys to think about this. And think about what's his dharma. So let's move on. Boat King, the villain of the story, right? Can we all agree that the Boat King is the villain? Right, like people are, people are, ah, see, now there's even confusion. Because earlier, if you guys, when I was talking about the Boat King, when I was like, ah, but I have additional conditions, everyone's like, fuck that guy. Fucking asshole. Fuck that guy. Yeah, right? So what is the Boat King's dharma? So, like, I want you guys to go back and, like, if you want to watch the VOD, like, watch the VOD. Watch your emotional reaction to the assholery of the Boat King. But when we talk about dharma, do you guys think, yes, right? So the Boat King is doing his dharma. His dharma is to look out for his daughter. Now we come to the hero of the story. Because Bhishma is a fucking hero in all these stories. What is Bhishma's dharma and did he do his dharma? He's the one who sacrificed, right? He gave up everything for the sake of his dad. Yeah, man. Sacrifice. Masculinity. Right? Like, those are all like, is he a good... Let's start with this. Is Bhishma a good guy? Is he a good guy? Is he a good dude? What's his alignment? You guys play D&D? What's his alignment? Who here plays D&D? So everyone agrees Bhishma is a good guy. And absolutely right. He's fucking lawful good. Right? Low int, low wisdom, but lawful good. Good. So he's a good guy. Is Bhishma doing his dharma? So what? why isn't he doing his dharma? You're right, paladin. He's sacrificing for his family. Why isn't that, his, isn't that doing your dharma? He's giving everything up. Isn't that noble and wonderful? And shouldn't we aspire to be noble and wonderful and sacrifice for the people that we love? Yes, you guys are right. So his first dharma is to the kingdom. This is the other thing. A son does not sacrifice for a father. A father sacrifices for a son. That's the direction, right? I mean, it's not entirely correct. It goes somewhat both ways. But in general, when it comes to, like, who takes a bullet for who, like, I take a bullet for my kids, not the other way around. So Bhishma does not do his dharma. So this is why things are confusing, right? Because we're saying that, like, oh, like, the villain in the story, the asshole in the story, is, so what's the Boat King's alignment? Let's play this game. This is a fun game. I've never played this game before. Right? What's the Boat King's alignment? He's not neutral. True neutral, you guys think? Really? Chaotic neutral? Okay. I, I kind of envision it as lawful evil, but if you guys think true neutral, y'all have the votes. Right? So this is why dharma is confusing. So I want you guys to take a step back and think about this, right? So the hero of the story is not doing his dharma, and the villain of the story is doing his dharma. So the problem is that when we think about what we should do in life, how do I discover what I'm supposed to do in life? We think about an axis of good and evil. We think like, oh, like I should do this or I should do this. But don't think about good and evil. Think about dharma. What's your duty? What's your responsibility? It may not be good. It may not be evil. So think about your dharma. Okay. All right. I'm going to just take a look at featured chat and see if we have any questions. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so here's a question. So what if your dharma in life is something negative? Is there not supposed to be a balance between good and evil? Um, so there has to be evil people as well. Some people's dharma has to be evil. No, I disagree. So my point here is that, like, evil and good are sort of like, I mean, I don't think that they're just conceptions, 
but that it's more complicated than that. And I think what you should always try to do is live your dharma. And oftentimes that's good things. But you should understand that blind goodness and blind evil are not actually dharma. That sometimes your dharma is to look out for yourself. And that you shouldn't like ascribe to just a standard set of morals, I mean, my opinion, or like the standard set of morals is doing your dharma. But that things are actually more complicated and that life is not black and white and there are shades of gray. So to think about what your responsibility is, right? So like if your parents are like, if your parents are pissed at you, there's a certain amount that they may have that is right. And there's a certain amount that they may have that is wrong. And that if, if you have conflict with your parents, like, are you doing your dharma to your parents? If you're living at home and like not earning money and living in like your parents' basement, playing video games all day, you're not doing your dharma to them. You're not doing your dharma to yourself. Like, what is your dharma? Like, start there. And it doesn't have to be something grand. Like, when I think about my dharma, it's to help gamers. And that sounds, like, grand and, like, oh, like... But it's it's just, like, I, I just, like, I get up and I stream, right? That's just what I do, and I just open my fucking mouth. So, like, what's your dharma? Like, it doesn't have to be grandiose. Like, in Sky's case, it's not to, like, repay all these debts. It's to take care of himself. It's to live a life without regrets. Right? It's not about success or failure. It's to live a life without regrets. To give it your all. And to go for Mount Doom, come hell or high water. That's his dharma. And that's your dharma too. Start there. Start by taking care of yourself. Forget about the rest of the world. Start by taking care of yourself. Start by eating healthy. Start by meditating. Start by polishing up your resume. Start by cleaning your room. Start by understanding that you deserve a better life, that you're owed a better life, that it's your karma to have a better life, and that you are doing yourself a disservice. You are not living up to your dharma to not take care of yourself. So start by doing your dharma to yourself. Forget about the rest of the world. That comes later. I spent 16 years or 14 years taking care of myself and putting myself first. Now I can help you because I'm... You know, I have to take care of myself. I had to do something. I had to gain skills and power and capability and knowledge, and then you can go help the world. You're going to save the world, like, you know, like, sure, you can be a hobbit, but, like, it sure as hell helps if you're fucking Gandalf or Aragorn or Gimli or Legolas. Like, they spent their time learning and training, and then they can do something in the world. So start there. Yeah, you got to level up first. Okay. So I'm going to sign off, uh, but it was great to see you guys again. Thank you all for coming, and thank you to Sky.